Hi everyone, my name's Sharon. Um, you might have stumbled across this video on my website. I just wanted to give you a bit of a um, help with the question that I'm often asked, which is what is occupational therapy, particularly for me and my situation. And um, so even my friends still ask me what is occupational therapy. Um, the most common thing that I'm asked is, do I find people jobs? And the answer is no. Um, or they might think that I'm a physiotherapist, which I guess is maybe better well known than um, occupational therapy. So, um, so I'm a children's occupational therapist. Occupational therapists work in many different situations, um, in hospitals, in prisons, in um, on mental health wards, on stroke wards, on hip replacement wards, all kind of places. What I do is I work with children predominantly um, with parents who either just think there's something kind of not quite right um, at school or home, um, and predominantly with children who are either awaiting or have got a diagnosis of autism, ADHD, dyspraxia, or sensory processing difficulties. If any of those words mean nothing to you, I'll explain them a bit more on the website. But really, occupational therapy is about looking at somebody's occupations, because occupations, doing, um, is really important, and I am a big believer in doing. Doing is really important, and that's how we kind of maintain kind of good mental health in general is doing. Um, so if you take a child, um, they will have loads, you know, hundreds of occupations. So one of their occupations might be school, for example, if they go to school. And within that um, context, within that environment, there will be lots and lots of occupations, tasks um, that they have to do. They have to be... Um, you know, over a certain age, they have to kind of self-organise themselves. They've got to problem solve. They've got to sit and listen. They've got to process information. Um, there might be lots of kind of um, various things going on in that in that specific environment in terms of sensory, so sound and light and touch and things like that. So what I do is um, I observe children um, in school um, and or home, if that's kind of relevant. Um, I observe them in the classroom, in the playground, over lunchtime, whatever is needed, to be honest with you. Um, and then we also use some assessments that OTs use internationally. And, and through those assessments and through those observations and through feedback from school, from home, from parents, from carers, from grandparents, whoever that is, we are able to kind of look at those occupations and try and find out what might be getting in the way. What is a stumbling block within that? Is it a skill that hasn't been developed? Um, is it the environment that's, um, that's really not kind of helping them, something in the environment? And we look at all those things and we make recommendations because um, occupational therapists are interested in independence, um, in confidence and I guess in happiness, um, which comes through those, um, you know, through the through the um, independence and through the confidence comes happiness. Um, and that's what we do, really. Um, so we use a variety of tools, which I'll describe a bit on my website. But occupational therapists are interested in somebody's, you know, doing what has meaning to them. Um, and how to try and make things a bit easier um, so that they can become more independent. Excuse the uh, excuse the hair at the moment, it's lockdown and uh, I'm afraid this is my lockdown hair at the moment, but I hope that helps. Um, if there's anything missing off the website um, or you need any signposting with anything, always feel free to get in touch um, and I hope that helps. All right, thank you.